<coughs> I would uh, like to uh, turn to Robert Turner. Uh, if you can explain to us, in light of what we heard in the report from Simone, what have how, how have the needs of the population of Gaza changed over the last few years, in your opinion? Thanks, Sam. Uh, maybe just a little bit on UNRWA first for those that are unfamiliar with the agency, um, because it's unique in a couple of ways. Uh, one is that UNRWA is the only UN agency that has a specific uh, targeted uh, uh, beneficiary population, which are refugees from, from Palestine exclusively, and we only operate in the five fields of Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, the West Bank, and Gaza. Um, also, the, the second unique feature of UNRWA is that we're the only UN agency that does direct implementation. So we don't, for example, have uh, partners uh, like the World Food Program would to distribute food or the UNHCR would to manage camps. Uh, we implement all of our programs ourselves. So in Gaza, because over 70% of the population are refugees, we are effectively managing four parallel ministries. Um, our education department runs 245 schools in which we employ 8,000 teachers and uh, educate 226,000 students in grades one through nine. Um, we have massive construction projects, uh, building thousands of homes, uh, dozens of new schools. Um, to give you a sense of the scale, economically, in 2012, our expenditures in Gaza represented 18% of the gross domestic product of Gaza. So it's, uh, it's on a scale and of a kind of operation that you will not see anywhere else in the world. Um, and maybe just one point clarifying what you were saying about the, the percentage of urbanized in Gaza. And the camps themselves are urban. Uh, they're indistinguishable from the surrounding communities. So actually the population of Gaza is 97% urban um, when you include the camps. But the situation over the last years, I think, as Simone said, it's, and as the report very clearly outlines, there are few specific vulnerabilities for the displaced or protection issues for the displaced that are not uh, seen throughout the population. And what we've seen over the last few years, starting in 2000, but, but more dramatically since 2007 because of the, the increasing restrictions on the movement of people and goods in and out of Gaza, is deep, crushing poverty. That's really the overarching situation in Gaza, and that's true whether or not you're displaced. So the unemployment rate is over 33% overall. For youth, it's over 50%. Um, the situation has gotten where Simone pointed out that uh, education is extremely important to the Gazans. Uh, we're at a point now where we're seeing a negative return on education. So the more educated you are, the more likely you're to be unemployed. So if you're an educated woman, uh, you have an 85% unemployment rate, for example. So the situation is deteriorating. It is only being mitigated through massive investment by UNRWA and the other human, uh, uh, humanitarian organizations here. Um, to give you again an example to, to sort of the scale of the poverty, UNRWA distributes food to 800,000 of the 1.2 million refugees in Gaza. The World Food Program distributes food to more than 200,000 additional people, so over a million of the 1.6, 1.7 million people in Gaza receive food assistance. After they receive that assistance, 44% of the population remain food insecure, which means they lack the income to complete a regular food basket. And I think that encapsulates or exemplifies best in a snapshot just how dire the situation in Gaza is. Before you start talking about the, the demographic issues where we have 3.5% uh, population growth, and the infrastructure problems, which are clearly outlined in the, the UN report, Gaza 2020, uh, a livable place, um, which clearly identifies particularly water um, as an issue that, that frankly, uh, is an existential threat to Gaza as a place where people can actually be living only seven, eight years from now. So I think I'll <coughs> stop there, Sam. Okay, can I just ask you, Robert, about the sustainability of uh, the aid and the help that you're providing in, in Gaza. Uh, it's a monumental challenge. How confident are you that you can sustain it and for how long? 
Um, not confident, particularly. I think um, we're looking at our program is approximately $500 million a year just for UNRWA. Now, um, a portion of that is construction, a portion of that is our human development activities, um, like uh, our education and health programs, but a portion is the emergency assistance, which is primarily food and cash for work. Um, that's chronically underfunded. Um, we are, last year we had to cut our cash for work by over 70%. Um, unfortunately, this year we've received some additional funding and that can bounce back. But the reality is, is that we see an ongoing de-development of Gaza. And if the restrictions on the movement of people and goods is not eased, uh, the situation will continue to deteriorate. And I have very little confidence that the international community will continue to fund programs at the scale it is for years to come. And can I just confirm that when you say de-development of Gaza, you mean that things aren't developing, they're actually getting worse, not just staying the same? Absolutely. We've already seen the devastation of the private sector. Um, the, the productive and wealth generating components of the economy have been gutted. Um, the, the skill loss through people who've had, both people who used to work and have not had an opportunity to work for five years have lost their skills. Plus, we're, we're, we're educating an entire generation of people who have uh, literally no real possibility of having employment, real employment. So it's, it's a loss of human resource, it's a loss of, of human capital, uh, and it's a loss of economic capital. Okay. Um, 